Hey there, and welcome back to another PMAT quick tutorial video. Today, we're going to be talking about the plot trace module. As usual, these videos assume that you've installed the PMAT suite and that you've been able to load some data in for processing. So if you haven't figured out how to do either of those things yet, please look at our other videos that describe exactly how you can install PMAP and how to load data in with either the Tucker Davis Technologies format or using the import data menu. Also, feel free to comment down below or to visit www.thebarkerlab.com in order to find our contact information and to reach out with questions, especially as they might pertain to the plot trace data module. The links for our website, as well as the link to the GitHub where you can download PMAT for your own use can be found in the description below this video. Now moving into the plot trace data module, what you'll see is that this module primarily consists of six checkboxes. These checkboxes allow you to examine your signal at varying steps along the processing from raw signal, in the case of the signal channel and control channel plots, to the scaling and fitting of channels using the signal versus control and the signal versus fitted control checkboxes, and finally to take a look at the change in fluorescence, otherwise known as the delta F over F, or the normalized variant of this, which uses z-scores to normalize the values of the delta F over F. And finally, down below, once you're plotting the delta F over F, you have the option to plot ticks above the signal that show you specific events that might be happening during the session, so you can compare their timing to the timing of large peaks or transients in your signal. If we just take a quick look at the signal and control channels, we can check both of these and hit plot and save. These two allow you to plot the data in its raw form, and once they've been plotted, you'll see an indicator that says that, they've, that these two plots have been successfully saved into your working directory. Once you have the plots up, you can examine them for problems in the recording, for example, large artifacts that have influenced the recording. You can also check them to determine the signal to noise of your recording by zooming in on the signal channel and estimating the bandwidth of random moments of noise, which is the fuzzier portion of the plot here versus signal. And you can also compare the dynamics you observe to the dynamics that you expect from whatever sensor that you're recording from. For example, in the case here, where we're recording from the fluorescent calcium sensor GCAMP, we expect a sharp rise followed by a slower scalloped decay, and that's exactly what we observe here. Some of the things that we're looking for in the control channel are that the channel itself is relatively flat over time. There shouldn't be these large peaks or spikes or transients, whatever you'd like to call them. And yet the control channel should also in many ways match the signal channel in terms of the decay, also known as the photo bleaching here. And if these two match up well, then you have a quality recording and you're ready to move forward. Now, we plan in the future to release a quality control video that discusses some commonly observed problems and where they might come from. But for now, these are some of the basic features you should be looking for. Before we move on to looking at the other components here, I just want to remind you that anytime PMAT saves a figure or a file for you, it will save it in your working directory. And if you forget where that working directory is, you can use the copy file path here, and then you can go into your file browser system and paste this into the path bar. And you'll be able to find a folder called figures, in this case for these, and PMAT will have saved all of the different plots that you created in this figures folder. Returning back to PMAT for a second, we can next start to look at the comparison between these two channels by plotting the signal versus control and the signal versus the fitted control. Again, once these two have plotted, you should see a pop-up that says the saves have been successful, and you'll find these files in the same working directory as that I just showed you. So if we look at the signal versus control, we can see something that's fairly typical of fiber photometry recordings, where the signal channel is maximized and recorded at the highest value possible, while the control channel is set much lower in order to help prevent photo bleaching of the signal that's being recorded. 
What happens in between the signal versus control and the signal versus fitted control is that we use a regression in order to scale up the control channel to fit the signal channel. And this gives you something that many people will think of as a predicted signal channel. And what's meant by this is that the signal you see here in red is meant to represent what the prediction would be for the value of the signal channel if you were to have recorded it in the absence of any of your neurotransmitter or other signals. And this allows you to do a number of different things. First, you can see that these two fit fairly well for the photo bleaching, and so by dividing one by the other, we'll be able to eliminate much of the photo bleaching that occurs here. Second, if we were to zoom into specific points on the plot, what you can see is that there are moments where changes in the animal's movement, bending of these fibers, or any number of other things can create artifacts that can look like calcium signals or neurotransmitter signals. So in these cases, we're able to subtract these out in order to provide us with a better estimation of the true signal coming from our biological sensor without the influence of any artifacts that might be caused by animal movement, changes in the position of the fiber, or any number of other things that we don't want in our signal. And again, you should be using these to help with your quality control process. And finally, we can move over and we can check how all of these different corrections that we've been building up to using the signal and control channels look by either plotting the delta F over F or the normalized delta F over F. For the sake of time, we'll look at the normalized delta F over F, which has become much more common in modern fiber photometry processing. And we'll hit the plot and save button. You should see the save successful. And then again, if you, if you look at this plot, what you can see is that we've corrected for most of the photo bleaching. There might be slight drifts across time, but for the most part, our signal is now flat. And you can also see if you look to the specific points in time where we had major artifacts in the control channel that we've corrected for some of these as well. The last thing that I want to point out is that once you've selected this normalized delta F over F, you have the option to plot specific events on top of your normalized signal. So in this case, we'll select two events of interest. And for the experiment that we're looking at with this example, we have a tone as well as a foot shock. And so we can also type the names into these boxes here, and that will update the legend to reflect the events that we're plotting in our normalized delta F over F plot. So now when we hit plot and save, what you're going to see is that it's the exact same signal as before, but just above all of the different peaks in the signal, we can now see a mapping of the timing for these behavioral events. This just gives you a little bit of relative timing so that you can start to decide whether there might be any correspondence between the behavioral event or experimental event of interest that you have decided to plot and the neural signals that you're recording, either calcium signals or neurotransmitter signals. Finally, as one last tip, especially some, this is something that can be especially important if you're conducting batch processing or if you're trying to run through large groups of files. There's a select and deselect all button here, which will allow you to quickly check or uncheck all of these checkboxes. And as a last reminder, the only way that you're going to gain access to this event plotting category is if you have the normalized delta F over F checkbox checked here. So if you're running into trouble with that, that's the first place to go. And that's basically it for our plot trace data module. I sincerely hope that this helps, and I would encourage all of you, especially new fiber photometry users, to make extensive use of this plot trace data module. It's going to help you get a very quick feel for the quality of your signals and allow you to make modifications that will produce higher quality recordings moving forward, and you will thank yourself in the end. With that, have a great day and happy recording.